Hi, I'm Darby Lettick, cousin to Max Headroom. We live out here in cyberspace. Beautiful place, quiet. Not a lot of crazy crap like on Earth. We're coming in for a little live presentation, a little report, an alert, a warning. Are you ready? I am. It's the floating head, a mirage, an illusion, almost as fantastical as the election cycle. Ah, but in an imaginary fictional way, in a book, written by somebody, published far in the future. It's a book called Wibblery and Wub. What? Wibblery and Wub. I'm a wib. That is a manifestation of the energy of soul in the form of a human being or any other being. And a being is a sentient being that feels emotion, is able to identify people like Vicky and others. What could a talking head possibly know? Especially this talking head. Not your conventional talking head. You go on news, you go on TV, you look for respectable looking people in suits with false teeth on the front, caps, crowns, illusion, lies, deception. And they're so, so, so good that we have a talking head instead. This is fantasy, not news. This is not real. No need for censors. And trolls, <clears throat> we eat them for lunch. Please, send us a troll for a snack. Now, on to the real news. Guess what? Be o okay And I'm okay. And you're okay for the moment. But guess what? It is getting seriously cold, folks. So I got a few things to talk about. And I'm going to tell you one thing right off the bat. The world is a crazy place. So, for those of you who don't know, we got problems coming up. The weather, for one. Uh, we're going to get snow in Texas. Not just a little snow. We're talking about a foot of snow in Dallas, Texas. We're talking about snow down where I am, so I got my protection, my insulation, my preparation is complete. Except I did shave this off, and I need to grow it back real quick. I highly recommend you go to POW, that's PonderOnWeather.com. Yeah, that's not a news service. That's a private individual who studies this, lives it, loves it. And guess what? You're going to tell you what may be a truth you don't want to hear, but it's real. And that's the weather's going to be nasty. T, by the way. Now, what are you going to do? This is like the worst weather we've ever had. It's so bad that the models can't predict it. Weather models. They're trying, but every time you look at them, they're getting colder and worse. Texas is about to close down, folks. If you're planning on getting to Texas and you didn't get here already, you might wait a week or more. It's going to be a week starting about tomorrow that you won't be able to drive in Texas around Dallas or anywhere else. Yeah, everywhere else I'm talking, Virginia, Tracy saying over there, man. Uh, yeah, winter is just about here. It is so close, it's sickening. Yeah, and I mean, I don't mind a little snow, but we're talking about freezing, rain, sleet, hay, and everything you can possibly imagine that's not supposed to be in Texas. So if it's in Texas, that means you guys are in trouble. And, and, and from what I'm looking at on the weather maps, you are. So. 25 below, oh my, <laughs> fine day. If you don't go outside, I got my snowsuit out. I'm washing it today. It snowed a foot back in 1985, January, in Seguin. Yes, 
That's the day I got off the plane coming from Puerto Vallarta in my nylon jumpsuit pants and my sleeveless t-shirt and they lost my luggage. And I walked out to remote parking to get that car in five inches of that lovely sunshine on the ground. I remember 1985 January. And they said, it never snows in Texas. All I had was a motorcycle to my name. Besides, I was in a ride that day. So I got that car, went over, got the airport, drove back to Austin in that snow. 1985, he is absolutely right. What's that tell you? It ain't common. But guess what? In 1985, it wasn't this bad. Yeah. The rodent said six more weeks, but he meant kind of like it's starting now. And we got six weeks of serious, at least serious winter. Now, again, people don't remember. In 1815, 1816, 1817, when the volcanoes were going off overseas, big ones. They take a lot of medium sized ones and blow them up at the same time. You take a few big ones and blow them up. The, same. the net effect is the same. It makes people on Earth look like piss ants when it comes down to how much we contribute to the particulate matter in the air, which is what contributes greatly to the amount of condensate that comes down as hail and snow and all these other things. And, uh, and stops the sun from getting all the way through to the ground and causes all sorts of moisture buildup and issues. And then on top of that, we got a whole big issue with our magnetic forces that affect everything changing on the earth. Now, for all you folks who don't follow this, don't worry about it. You're not going to learn it all in the next few days. So you got to depend on some experts. I highly recommend go watch Ice Age Farmer. He's a young man, and I highly respect him for everything he's been doing, as hard as he's been working. Contribute to him if you can. Do whatever you can to help him out. He talks about seed storage. He talks about what the FDA is doing right now. Did you know 2030, the reset has now been implemented thanks to the bid on Akami in my story, in my fiction, in the book of Wibbley and Wub. The next chapter is already being written. Yes, the FDA now will require that you track the GPS, the ground location by computer of everything that is grown and sold. Now, for somebody like Bill Gates, that's not going to be a problem. Having a computer, tracking everything, this plant grew here, went here, got processed, went there, got processed. That is the new FDA regulations coming up, kids. That is your chickens, your cows, anything you want to sell will be tracked. Tracked. Now, Eggs. You got it. Anything. What's that going to allow them to do? It's going to blockchain. They're going to be able to process and track it from the farm to the kitchen table and regulate it. Who gets it? Where it goes? Does China get that batch? Uh, yeah, that's a sign to China. Well, I don't want to give China. Well, sorry. It's not your decision anymore. Now, supposedly they're going to let out the small farmer growing for his family. It's still debatable whether we're going to be able to grow in a small community and share it because co-ops are actually going to fall underneath the realm of dictate. Dictate. Dictate is a way you make laws and sometimes you just sign them in effect through executive order. Dictators are known for making dictates that are not voted upon but are pushed upon the public through various methods. Amongst them is... Control who makes the votes and pushes them on you, which means control who gets voted in, which there's all sorts of ways of doing that. And I write about those fictional aspects in the book of Wibbley and Wub as I'm talking about them now and kind of giving you a preview of what's coming in these chapters that have yet to be announced. Of course, many of you are part of that. Um, as we write this, you know, people can make a difference. What's going to stop all this from being implemented? Well, guess what? On the farm, you're not going to be okay. Yeah. Now, you do have to track it all just in case you think about selling it one day. It's all going to be tracked. Because if you don't have it tracked, well, guess what? You can't sell it. Now, here's where the next problem comes in. If you wipe out all the small businesses and you only leave the big box stores in place, like Walmart, and Walmart decides to go to a zero carbon net buyer only, which means that if you don't have documentation, if you aren't following these prescripts, in other words, it's scripted. You do this. You don't do this. Now it's a dictate. Dictate means you didn't do it. You're supposed to do it. Now we're going to straighten you out and give you a little lesson. You can't sell any of your food to any, any major big store that survives. And of course, they will. Actually, you can't sell it anywhere unless you track it and document it the entire way. A number. 
tracked by big tech. Those great guys we depend upon to go ahead and run our voting and yeah, our media and uh, our government. And uh, guess what? I got a feeling that monopoly suits that went up after those big tech guys, I got a feeling they're going to fade away. What do you think? Yeah. In my book, they do. Yeah, P-O-W is Ponder on Weather. P-O-W, PonderOnWeather.com. Or on, on YouTube. Go there. He's really good. Um, yeah, the, the world is coming to a point of idiots running it. Okay? And, and the problem is, how do we go around that? Well, that's all the book of Wibbley and Wub is about. It's, it's a Max Headroom and Darby Lettig got together. And they said, well, what do we do to create a virus? And see, Max Headroom's getting kind of old, guys. I'm sorry. He's an old program. He's been blocked everywhere. Nobody can get Max Headroom anymore. He's been censored. Anybody remember Max Headroom? That's what ghosting is about. Yeah. If I can ghost you, if I can erase you, if I can censor you, and nobody notices, hmm, couldn't I just as easily kill you off? Isn't that sort of the predecessor to mass elimination you got your cell phone we can follow you oh we didn't like what you said oh by the way you ain't got no cell phone oh, you don't need it you're in prison you communicate face to face during the communist revolution as they were rewriting the language yes that was a very important part of communism was to go ahead and redefine the words that the public was allowed to use hmm like Chinese flu or something like that. And you dictate it. Dictate it. What's dictate means? One person decides you will not use that word or we will come down on you and arrest you. Throw you in jail. Don't you break our dictates. In the book of Wibble and Wub, that's a pretty scary scene. And Darby is like... <laughs> I just read in a book. I'm not serious. And they said, you can't even say it if you're playing around. Woo! Howdy. Okay. Guess what? There's always going to be another word. That's the beautiful thing about words. It's called wordsmithing. Luckily, we got lots of words to work with. Perspicuity. You've heard me talk about perspicuity. That's acuity of your perspective, your perception. Because if you do not have a good perspective, you ain't seeing nothing. You'll see a lie to be truth. And you'll see a truth to be lie. Hey, Ron. Glad to see you back. Aaron. Goodness, I actually got people coming to visit nowadays. This is so nice. Thank you, Vicky. Yes, this is now becoming a point of how do we form a peaceful resistance, which is what Wibbley and Wub was about in the book, is this um, virus of only 20 little tiny words about we, W-I-I. -I, that's these eyes. And you eyes out there, all of us together, makes the we, the W-I-I, of the world. And we work under a world union of beings. That's all the, you know, all the people. Dogs, cats. Yeah, my, my dog helped me out. Believe me, I need protection. My dog's included in one of the beings that I'm going to take care of. Babies. Not even born. They're beings. They need to be taken care of. There's lots of things out there that are being neglected. Beings that are being tortured and abused, used, trafficked. They need to be taken care of. And somebody's not doing it. In fact, in the last several administrations prior to the one that just got done, I don't recollect a whole bunch of human trafficking being talked about. Child trafficking being talked about. Now, why do you suppose that is? I can give you a hint. Look at that. A fading wave. Help, I'm shrinking. I'll be good. No, I don't go that easy. Yeah. But that's what they're doing. They cut my traffic back. Nobody gets to see what we got to say. People like Lynn Wood disappear, get accused of being crazy, take away their license, their ability to talk, to speak, to be seen. And guess what? Next thing you know, we won't even really be able to recognize our own America. There are days when teachers were offering toys and tips and candy to kids at school to turn in their parents if they happen to have guns at home up in the Northeast. 
You go in the candy room and you pick something out. And you turn in your parents. They got they got they got guns. Well you just go ahead and talk about those guns a little bit and you have another piece of candy or a toy of your choice. Now kids are fairly pliable. Almost like adults being offered checks to go ahead and comply. I know you're starving, but I'm going to give you a solution here. I'm going to give you a check, and you're going to be able to eat next week, and now you're going to love me because I'm your captor. Did we go through this with Mrs. Hirsch? Long time ago. In fact, we came up with a name for a syndrome. Hello, Akron, Ohio. Deidre, it is some cold country up there. I almost froze to death north of you. 17 years old, waiting to go in the Army. I was hitchhiking up from Alabama to Michigan to say goodbye to some friends, not to visit my mother. Although she did pick me up on the highway hitchhiking, of all things, in Muskegon, Michigan. I'm down down the road, and lo and behold, my mother pulls over and picks me up. Last person on earth I planned to see before I went in the Army. And there she was. Took me home 30 miles away, visited my brother and sister. About an hour, two hours. Back, back on. Walk back out the front door. I don't think I saw her again for about 16 years. My son was born. Must have been more than that. Anyway. Happy memories. I want y'all to go out there and try to do the best you can. Remember, we're on day three. But make it good. Make it nice. Love yourself. Love those people, good and bad, that made your life what it is. Prepare. Remember I said that before this week started, before we had 65, 75.0 earthquakes. We got the highest number of earthquakes we've ever, ever, ever had at one time since we've been recording them. And it's getting kind of like red line, red line. Oh, remember I told you the other day, we raised it up. It used to be 35 would get you in the red zone. 35, 5 oh quakes in a week. And then it went up to, uh, gee, um, we're hitting the red line too many times. There's green, yellow, and red. And that's that really good site for earthquakes. If you haven't gone over there, um, there's a couple of them. Yeah, nice sites. Some of them are operated by that great, wonderful entity, you know, you, you know, our government. And they don't always tell you everything. But, for example, this new one that just hit 5.9 in Tajikistan. They aren't handling that good. I can guarantee you it's a 91 kilometer deep, which is pretty deep. But as it is right now, that's that spread I was talking about. Because we've been thumping still. The last thumps down there in Loyalty Islands three hours ago, there was two 5.3s. What's a 5.3? That's a big thump at 10 kilometers deep. If that happened in New York City, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3 every hour. That was three hours ago. Um, Indonesia, the Philippines hit right at about five hours ago, but at six hours ago again, seven hours it hit again. And at uh, seven hours it hit again. And at eight hours it hit again, 5.7, big one. And then at eight hours it hit again, 5.2. And eight hours it hit 4. Point, oh, that's Chile. Chile's been feeling the effects now. So, guys, the earth is shaking. The weather's moving. The North Pole's kind of taking a trip south. You hadn't noticed that? 10 to four, 1,024 millibars. That is a record high moving down through the middle of the country. And guess what? It's being followed up by four more major storms. Dallas is talking about being frozen, not coming above freezing, possibly. Hardly at all, for a week. Snow upon snow upon snow. I know, I lived in Michigan. We got plows, we got salt, we got all that shit up there. You guys aren't worried. What's 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 ten inches of snow? In Texas, hmm, let me see, comparably speaking, if you're in Chicago, if you're in Michigan, and you got six feet of snow, eight feet of snow in four days. That's what the equivalent is for Dallas. There's no trucks, there's a couple of no, put it this way. We don't have plows. We got some sand. We got way too many bridges. We got way too many underpasses. And our highways, in case you had noticed that 100 car pile up that everybody died, lots of people died. Five, six people on that one, and they're worse. Lots of people got injured. 
And on top of that, you get injured when it's sub-zero freezing rain out there. Don't get in your car. Don't drive. That's my own warning. Remember what I said? I got a whole thing on how to make sure your heaters aren't going to kill you for lack of oxygen. These are serious times. So why this talking here get on here today? Because guess what? This is a lot of distraction. In my book, I'm trying to write this book and I'm paying attention to all this shit going on, trying to go ahead and follow along. So I got some, some resources, you know, to just fine tune it. It's actually written in the past. This is not something that wasn't prophesized. So I'd be my job is just to fine tune it. To help mix you. Yes, Trisha, it does have something to do with that. Yes, in Dutch, I always recommend Dutch Sense. Absolutely. He does keep it real. They attack him all the time for it. And, and Trisha, yes, it has absolutely something to do with the planets. The whole system is moving into Aquarius. I tell people all the time, if you don't appreciate astrology, you should. Round bodies of energy that have direct and now visible links, plasma links, going to the sun, going between planets. And if you have to cross one of those as you go by, bing, you catch it, that's actually going to affect us. As human beings, we are bioelectrical computers. And if you're grounded, you can actually move a lot of the energy through your body and into the ground. But if you got rubber soles on, you're not grounded. So when the energy hits your body, it causes a bunch of inflammation, it causes stress, it causes almost like you feel like your blood's boiling in your ears. Yeah. Sometimes it almost is. I highly recommend LAMB's L-A-M-B LAMB EMF Electromagnetic Frequency Beanies, caps, shirts, underwear. If you want to protect your your lower body parts, you can actually protect yourself from electromagnetic radiation to some degree using these uh, fabrics that have silver threads in them. And no, I don't sell any of them. I just recommend what I buy. And I happen to bought some of those. And I mean, we go into the city where the 5G is strong in San Antonio. And my ears right down here start getting really hot. And back right here, it gets really hot. And I put that beanie cap on and my head cools off. I mean, I can feel my head cool off putting a beanie, a toboggan, over my head in the summertime. That tells you something. Someplace, somewhere. Now, we also have this little thing called a radiation meter. You take this puppy along with you in your car. My battery's dead. But, if it weren't dead. We actually going around on 610, the highway, the bypass around the city, and that thing will go off on danger, danger, Will Robinson, get your ass out of here. It will go off like that in your car. For a mile and a half, it's going through the big intersections with all the apartment complexes all around, blasting away 5G and, and internet and radio frequencies and everything being repeated. The levels of radiation are so high that Trinity, who has an electromagnetic frequency I say, immunity issue. If she's around that too long, she gets back here, man. She is worn out. It's almost like she's been working out all day. But if she wears the beanie and wears the little sweater, she comes back here. She's still full of energy. She gets out there and does all that stuff. I can feel it too. Now, is it my imagination? Is it her imagination having multiple cirrhosis in the past, having fibromyalgia in the past, having been on all those prescriptions in the past that she's off now? Having lost all that weight and gotten in good condition where she could feel the difference? It's real. If you don't think these phones, if you don't think those towers they're putting up are going to hurt you, guess what? One more reason to be out in the country, folks. If you're down there in the square riding and carrying on, one of the tools we have available in the military is this small little microwave generating device and under low power you can just fan the crowd and the next morning 59% of the women who are pregnant will be having miscarriages the bulk of the other people will be either lethargic depressed but they will have been impacted by that electromagnetic frequency generated at such levels that it affects them through the night and the next day actually affects their body and if you use ultra-low frequency, you can actually cause pain and gel the guts of a human being. Like we did in Iraq, but didn't quite mention in the media. It's always nice for generals to have opportunities to test their toys. 
Sadly, most Americans don't know, we had boots in the ground in six different countries during the Obama administration. Six countries. Not to say that T was doing a whole bunch better. We're talking in Africa, Yemen, and other places that the average human on Earth doesn't realize America is participating in the peace process. It's just which team are we picking on with to help? Picking on or picking to help. That's a problem. If you get evil people in our government, they pick evil people over there to help. And then what do you get? You get evil from the top down, which seems to be going on in this book I'm writing about, Wibbley and Wub, that tries to dissect the difference between who or what or how. These two forces, if it's possible, good, which I would describe as those who feel this spirit of energy of God pouring through that allows us to make contact and gives us the ability to have empathy, love, and power well beyond anything they can imagine. Those who do not have that, those whose pineal gland is calcified thanks to fluoride, thanks to all sorts of other things that might have happened that gives it maybe difficult for them to fully grasp, fully feel. Now, some would say that's not what it is. Some would say, such as the Gates studies and um, CIA studies and our government, that there is a part of the brain that's actually um, clearly active in people that are passionate, people that are religious, although they do use the word fanatics. Now, what is a fanatic? Again, these words, my goodness, don't we play with these words? What is a domestic terrorist? What is a terrorist? What is crazy? What is danger crazy versus, oh, she's just so crazy. She's just a funny old girl. These are important things to consider as your government suddenly turns into a dictated democracy. How's that? A dictated democracy is what we've gotten into. Mm. Wait a minute. Dictated democracy is not on our list of options right now in the narrative, is it? We got fascist. We got communist. We got democracy. We got capitalism. Wait a second. Dictated democracy. Hmm. Should I coin that term for my book? Oh. Damn, I already did. Do copyrights in the future affect us today? Do you know that somebody's actually used the words wibbly and wub over and over again since I created them? <laughs> I brought them into manifestation in the 1970s, 40 years ago. And over the years, I've dropped them here and there, and you know how it is. The world doesn't want to listen to shit like that unless it's the right time. And then we can get together and create a world union of beings that could maybe communicate through webbling, going on the web and communicating, or wibbling, mind-to-mind -mind communication, like you do with your honey or your children. Or we can wibbleize, we can create things like this video and this character, this CGI-generated character, not a real human being. Darby Lettick, by the way, just for, your own, just for your own information, you are looking at a talking CGI generated head and a absolutely the most incredible CGI set you'll ever get on if you can get into the computer and get on in Salvage, Texas. Yeah. Harrowing the difficulties it is, you know, but we have managed to create sort of a little invisible paradise, you know, vortex, holes in the ground, ships in the sky. That kind of place. Yeah. It's a fantasy. In order to write a book now, people don't just read. They don't read. Hardly at all. Their attention span, well, I guarantee you, most of them dropped out about nine minutes into this. They're long gone. Vicky's still here. Trisha's still here. Deidre's still here. But she's signing off. See? Yes, get to work, guys. Thing is, always feel free to pause me. I'm out of here, too. But yes, please. Check on the people you know. Check on the people you love. Make sure they got food. Make sure they got heat. Over the next few days, do your job as a human. Be truthful. Be honest. Keep your eyes open. Prepare. Share. Please, share. Nobody's going to hear about this otherwise. Communicate. And go visit those people I mentioned. Adapt 2030. He's the other guy. Y'all have a good day. Love y'all.